building brand trust online. For many businesses, their websites, their email newsletters, maybe even Facebook pages or Twitter feeds are an integral and interactive part of serving their customers and clients. Building more trust online is a huge topic for businesses to explore. And joining me to discuss the subject is Talk Business contributor Emily Reeves. She's the Director of Account Management and Research for Stone Ward, one of the state's largest marketing agencies. Emily, welcome back to the program. Thank you for having me. Well, whom to trust seems to be shifting, friends and colleagues versus corporations and experts. Can you kind of explain to our audience what research tells us about trusted sources? Sure. Um, well, when it comes to online information, the past several years we've seen people saying that they trust people like themselves when they're looking for information about a product or a company. So they're reading consumer reviews on Amazon or Zappos or, or other sites like that. They're reading what the consumers say about a product rather than what the brand itself says or what experts say. Well, the recent research is showing that with this economic recession, people are becoming even more cynical and distrustful of information and, and how they seek it. So they're looking for information from experts and from people who are not associated with the company to get that information. And then they're also looking back towards the company a little bit more than they used to and, and wanting to find out everything they possibly can from the company. So the information that a company is putting out there is becoming very important. So they're, they're basically becoming more well-rounded in their decision making and looking at all aspects of information that are out there before they make a decision. Well, who are some of the experts that we would think about? Who are some of these so-called experts? Are they consumer advocates? Are they that people have some sort of uh, particular background, what, what kind of defines an expert? Well, that would vary depending on the category or the industry that we're looking at. It could be, um, it could be a consumer reports type uh, situation where they've done several product reviews and they're a third party independent uh, person that's doing the reviewing. Or it could be, if it's a science based thing, it could be a scientist. I mean, it could be anything uh, depending on the category. Well, let's give some practical advice for a business owner out there. You, you don't have to jump in with both feet first to go gangbusters. So how do you kind of start slowly in terms of building trust with your customers and your clients? Sure. The, the biggest thing with trust is sharing information, being open and honest, which is difficult for a company to do when they're just starting out, if, they don't, if they're not used to sharing information with consumers. So you might want to start out with um, just you know, allowing consumer input. They can post comments to your website or ask an expert type uh, feature on your website where people can post questions and someone from the company can respond and it's out there for everyone to see. You might want to use video whenever you can. Rather than a traditional news release, do a video news release. People like to see the looks on faces. They, they comprehend the information a little bit differently when they see people's reaction to how they're speaking about the information. So there's some things that you can do without just all of the sudden bearing your soul, that your company's soul online and expecting all of this you know, rash of, of input. <laughs> Obviously, there are opportunities and pitfalls in building trust in an online space. You have to contend with anonymity, for instance. Um, you certainly don't have control over what's said about you to a degree. So kind of what are some of the risks and rewards for a business? You know, I think I'm going to give you an example of something that happened as what not to do and what the risks can be. Nestle has a Facebook page. And uh, about a month ago, they, whoever's monitoring their Facebook page, put a message on that said, fans, please do not use our logo as your, uh, as your Facebook profile picture or do not alter our logo in any way. Basically, don't use it, but don't even, you know, they don't want you altering it or anything. And they posted that on their Facebook page. And people reacted very strongly and said, don't tell us what we can and can't do. It's actually, it's actually a compliment for a person to want to use a brand's logo and, and make it unique and reflect that in their personality. And the Facebook people that were monitoring, or the Nestle people that were monitoring, essentially ins insulted the customers in this response and it, it grew into this massive <laughs> revolt against Nestle that generated a lot of PR stories and news stories 
online about what not to do. So the risk of, of allowing people to comment is certainly out of your control, but what you can do is respond in a positive way and be proactive in your response, be kind, and allow people to interact with your brand and engage with your brand and have a positive experience. If you're reprimanding them, of course it's only going to get worse. So you can't control it, but you can massage it in the right direction and show that you're being fair and honest in your responses. All right, Emily, so what's the bottom line on building trust in the information age? Sum it up for us. To be honest, first of all, I think that is first and foremost what you need to do. Do not try to cover up. Uh, be as truthful as possible. Um, put as much information out there as you possibly can where you, where you feel comfortable and engage with your, uh, with your customers. Allow them some input. That would be another step is allow them to give you the feedback and show them that you're responding and show everyone else that you're responding. And then, um, you know, just be out there and talk to them, um, whether it's in person, on video, if you can, or uh, respond in, in a positive way. All right. She's Emily Reeves, Director of Account Management and Research for Stoneward Advertising. Emily, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Emily has a column on this subject on her blog, MsAdverthinker.com, which you can access through our website at talkbusiness.net.